You know, when it comes to a lot of shape-shifting, you know, stories, you know, whether the well, mostly, you know, if they're, you know, fan fiction, you know, original ideas or whatever the case may be, and whether they're written or they're artistically created in a web comic-like environment, one of the things that seems to be very popular when it comes to the authors behind the stories, whether they just write them for you to read or turn them into web comics for you to read and look at, one of the most popular traits that they always seem to go to um, with these with characters, mostly, and I say this with all due respect, no offense, all due respect, no offense, but the one trait that they seem to go to with the female shapeshifters is giving them the ability to split themselves in two or three. Yeah, I'm not lying about that. There have been numerous stories that I've read, and I'm sure a lot of you've read, on places like Patreon, DeviantArt, Fur Affiniate, um, Ink Bunny, you name it, Echo's Portal, and some and most of these stories that involve shapeshifting always seem to involve the main female shapeshifter, and again, I say this with all due respect, no offense, the main female shapeshifter gaining the ability to not only become anyone or anything, you know, any other person, any, you know, inanimate object, vehicle, animal, whatever. Not only does it showcase, you know, and talk about, you know, this character gaining those abilities, but sooner or later, it starts talking about, if not showcasing, that character also gaining the ability to split herself into multiple copies or multiple clones. One good example of this is, of course, Mr. Internet Man's Mystic Makeover series. As I've mentioned before, the character of Veronica mysteriously gained the ability through some nightshade lipstick that was given to her, or night shadow, shadow night lipstick, or whatever it's called, that was given to her mysteriously by some unknown individual. Thus, when she applies it, she becomes the alter ego demonica. And even though she's become the alter ego known as demonica, by becoming this character, she's developed, and you know, she deve or discovered, I should say, not developed, but she discovered the ability to shape shift into anything or anyone she wants, as well as being able to, you know, melt down into a puddle, you know, become complete liquid, whatever the case may be. You know, she's gained the ability. She's even gained the ability to basically envelop, absorb somebody into her body and add their mass to hers temporarily before bringing them back out. Now, the other thing uh, that I've talked about when it comes to the Demonica character of Mystic Makeover is Veronica as Demonica has also discovered the ability as a shapeshifter to split herself in two. And she's, anytime she becomes Demonica, in some of the stories that Mr. Internet Man would write of her, he would go this, you know, he would go in this direction. Uh, one, you know, one such story is called Two for One or something like that. And let's just say I can't show the picture here. But let's just say it ends where basically your imagination takes off to the next level, if you know what I mean. And basically it does kind of set the tone for the fact that someone like Mr. Internet Man might consider looking into maybe an ink bunny, a fur affiliate like account as a backup or an extension of his main DeviantArt account so he can give... You know, you know, more of an, uh, an extension to his stories instead of just limit, limiting them to what Devonard allows. But anyway, like I said, you know, he allows, you know, Demonica to learn about this ability and gain this ability. And most of the time, like I said, the endings are left to the imagination. Because, as I've said before, Veronica as Demonica, when she gains this ability, you know, is basically, you know, let's just put it this way, like I said, you leave it to your imagination, she is basically 
making out with her. She's basically having her way, making out, making love to herself. That's basically what it, you know, is the equivalent. It is the equivalent. It equals up to, if you catch my drift. But the Mystic Makeover series isn't the only series that does this. Joven 16, I think that's who it is, Joven 16, the one behind Nano Shift, has also basically allowed this to be part of his stories as well. One primary story that he did is called Beach Party. And he's been doing this one on and off over the past year or two. And it involves a character named Barbara who gains the ability to shapeshift into anybody she wants. And not only shapeshift into anybody she wants, but the other common trait with this, as well as Mr. Internet Man's um, Mr. Mako Mystic Makeover series, is when a character shapeshifts into somebody else, they basically gain that, or they basically give life to that persona that they shapeshift into. And, you know, they just go from there. I mean, the persona acknowledges basically, you know, where she came from and everything. Like I said, a good example, you know, of that is uh, basically, you know, the two for one uh, kind of deal uh, that I was talking about, which basically ends with you left to your own devices, your own imagination. But... Basically, both the girls that, you know, Demonica splits into, or Demonica, Veronica splits into, acknowledge, you know, at the end, basically, that, you know, they acknowledge Veronica's existence. They acknowledge that Veronica, through her wicked, wild imagination, came up with them to, you know, came up with the idea for them to exist. Now... You know, how this ties into Joven 16's Beach Party uh, webcomic is the fact that the character of Barbara gains the abilities to be a shapeshifter herself, able to, you know, do the same thing, you know, gain the abilities to become anyone she wants, maybe anything. And she essentially becomes these two different ladies at separate times, but then... Uh, during the comic when, you know, she's in one of the personas that she creates, I think her name is Cindy or something like that. Um, she, you know, she wishes that her other persona that she shapeshifts into could be around at the same time. And all of a sudden, that other persona just pops out. Like, she just literally just pops right next to her and splits away from her entirely, gains a body of her own, and both basically acknowledge that, you know, they are, you know, they are the girl that, you know, originally shaped shift into them, uh, you know, individually, and that being Barbara. In other words, they acknowledge that Barbara has been split now into two, the two separate bodies, and they acknowledge that she's the reason they exist. And basically, of course, Barbara, later on in the story, decides to have a little fun in these individual bodies she's given life to, in their own personas to, and go from there. But yeah, that's, but yeah, basically, this always seems to be a common trait. And again, I say this with all due respect, no, all due respect, no offense. This always seemed to be a common trait tra with the female uh, shapeshifters in these stories. That the author always seems to go in this directive. Whether it's in a story, like I said, that you read. Whether it's in a webcomic story that you read and you look at. You know, it always seems to be that this is a moment. This is an area that they like to explore and they like to go with. And honestly, I don't think any of us, you know, man... I don't think any of us, male or female, you know, have a problem with that because it makes the story more intriguing. Because when you think about it, when you think about it, the person that in story, you know, does this uh, is basically risking their very existence. A good example of something like that is Michelle uh, Jackalador, if you will, Michelle, aka Jackalador or Jack of the Door, yeah, on DeviantArt, one of the story series she has been um, doing is called Becoming Unlimited, or Unlimited. 
And in one of the more recent chapters, not the one she did called Jealousy, but the other one that was came out about a year or so prior called uh, Stalking, the end of it consisted of the two female personas that Izzy had created to, you know, have fun, be mischievous, and try to get an idea of exactly who he is and what who he is and wants to be. And basically they split themselves in two. They basically split Izzy's body in two. And the end of that chapter, the stalking chapter, leaves is left on a cliffhanger because you think basically that Izzy has been, you know, erased from existence. But we find out that in the but we find out in the next chapter that that's not the case. But because you know because of the fact that he now has these abilities that are very clayface like, so he has so he's able to survive. But the ending of that, like I said, kind of leaves you on a cliffhanger, wondering, oh my God, did he get erased from existence? When in fact that's not the case. But what Michelle did at the end of that stalking chapter is a good example of what makes these kind of you know moments in these shapeshifter stories intriguing. The fact that when a character does this, you know they kind of you know kind of risk the fact that they could erase each other from existence, and that's almost what happened to the Izzy character, the Isaac character, if you will. Now, not once. Not once, I should say, has Mr. Internet Man done that with uh, Veronica DeMonica, if you will, or Rebecca Exotica. Not once has he done that. And not once has anybody else, like Aunt Zolson, Z Zolson if you will, not once have they done it, nor has uh, anyone else done it, as far as I know. Michelle is the only one that came the closest um, in the way she did it. Um, I'm not sure if Joven 16 is going to do it with Beach Party. I don't know if he's going to attempt to do it with Nano Shift. I don't know. But I do know this. And I don't even know if Trouble TRO is going to do it uh, with Pink Benefits or whatever other stories he's working on as well. But again, I do know this. That it just feels weird and intriguing to see a lot of these shape-shifting stories that focus on the female shapeshifters. Again, I say this with all respect, with all due respect, no offense. It's it's just weird and intriguing to see that this is always this always seems to inevitably be a direction, you know, that all the authors and writers of these kind of stories go in. And whether or not they go in that direction you know, just for fun, with no consequences, or they do go in that direction and they give consequences, I think that's what makes it intriguing and fun. But what do you guys think? What are your thoughts about, you know, the authors out there, like a Joven 16, a Mr. Internet Man, a Michelle, a.k.a. Jack of the Door, or anybody else, you know, doing these kind of stories to where basically the female shapeshifter, again, is saying that with, I'm saying that with all due respect, no offense, you know, gains the ability to become any Anything she wants, anybody she wants, meltdown and all that. You know, what are your thoughts on the fact that one of the powers they eventually, you know, are written into having in the story is the ability to split themselves in two or three different bodies and go from there? What are your thoughts on that? Let me know down below as well as in the live chat during the premiere. Like the video. Uh, check me out on Patreon at BW Roses, as well as BW Roses on Vimo, BW Roses discussion on all your favorite podcast locations except for Pandora, as well as check out my Teespring store as well for merchandise. But again, let me know what your thoughts are on this whole situation, and I will talk to you all later.